Welcome all. Um, tonight we're doing our uh, Facebook Live event and we're really fortunate to have uh, a Sabre alum, uh, Dr. Nicole Falls. Um, she is a, um, a surgeon and um, she's actually working right now um, at uh, St. Barnabas Medical Center in Livingston, New Jersey. So Dr. Falls, thanks for joining us. Uh, Dr. Falls will answer the most commonly asked questions about clinical rotations, uh, residency match, and really the process with Sabre Medical School. Uh, just to give you a little background on Dr. Falls, um, she's an honors graduate at the University of Western Ontario with a specialization in health sciences. When she headed off to Sabre, school of, uh, Sabre University School of Medicine and discovered her true calling as a surgeon. Uh, she credits Sabre as being key to earning her first residency in a highly competitive field and then topping that a year later, securing a PGY2 position in general surgery at St. Barnabas Medical Center in Livingston, New Jersey. Um, Dr. Falls also is uh, an accomplished athlete, um, and so she's not only good with her, her hands, but also her arms and legs. Uh, she's done triathlons. As a matter of fact, she did a triathlon at uh, SABA, um, and actually it was, was it your first triathlon at SABA and you finished second? Uh, the first one at Saba, yeah, not my yeah. first one, yeah. Yeah, so it's great. And then um, it's kind of exciting is on Saturday, she's got a half marathon in Vegas. So she's pretty busy and kind of doing some amazing things. So we appreciate you taking the time to uh, help us and um, kind of learn a little bit more about the process and what it's like to be um, in Saba and also what it's like to be a surgeon. So thanks so much, Dr. Falls. Mm -hmm. First question, how did you first hear about Saba? And what went into your decision to choose Seba uh, Medical School? Uh, I first heard about Seba when I was applying to medical school, uh, trying to get into Canadian Medical School, which was obviously unsuccessful just due to the mass number of people that apply in the few spots that they have available. And I had a lot of friends who had gone to medical school abroad, and one of the places was obviously the Caribbean, and Seba came up in my search. Um, so that was kind of what spearheaded that uh, idea. And then once I had heard from Paula and had gotten in, you know, I realized all of the benefits of going to a Caribbean medical school. That's great. Um, you know, one of the things when well, obviously we're, you know, students are searching for um, a med school and the right med school for them, uh, they're really looking for kind of specific aspects. And one of them, um, we talk about the learning environment. Were there any specific aspects of the learning environment at SABA that um, you particularly enjoyed? Yeah, I would say definitely uh, the cadaver lab. It was very hands-on. The attendings were very receptive to teaching there. It was a great opportunity to kind of put what you learned in the classroom to what you would actually see um, and realize that patients are not like textbooks, which is really important, especially where I am today. Sure. Um, you know, also too, like the class sizes were reasonable in that you could easily ask questions, you know, go to office hours. They were very receptive to questions during in the classroom, both outside of the classroom as well. So I think that that was really good. Yeah, I think that feedback, the ability to be able to give feedback and get feedback is so important. Um, and you're absolutely right. So much of this is hands on and your ability to be able to do first cut cadavers. Um, you know, if we're talking about, um, you know, really doing hands-on, it's hands-on the body, and, and that can be uh, a major difference in really kind of getting that feel, and especially with you being a surgeon. Oh, yeah. What was your relationship with your professors? Um, certainly a smaller class size and your ability to be able to have access to them. Uh, do you feel they were available to you and helpful to you? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, as I said, you know, in cadaver lab, they were more than available to us kind of whenever we had lab, but also outside of lab time. Uh, you know, my other professors were easily available after um, class hours, like in office hours. But, you know, too, as we went up in the semesters, you obviously know your professors better. They know you better. You've been there for a period of time. So that makes it significantly easier um, and you feel more comfortable talking to them more as like your comrade as compared to, you know, um, you know, being a little bit more timid around them. That's great. I mean, again, having that one-to-one -one, um, learning experience is really important. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you got what you needed uh, from Seba. How was the island? The food, the lifestyle? I mean, I, and I know it can be a transition in terms of that. Talk to me a little bit about what that was and um, how it was for you in terms of setting this up. 
The island was definitely part of the experience for sure. I'm from a small town, so migrating to another small town was not that hard. Um, the island in and of itself was beautiful for sure. Uh, the people of the island were more than welcoming to everybody who was coming in. They were, you know, my landlord, for example, was the nicest man ever. He was easy to get a hold of if we had a problem, as were a lot of the other um, native people to the island. In terms of the food, you know, I'm a picky eater and I was more than able to get food on the island. My neighbor and I would coordinate going to the grocery store on Wednesdays when the boat came in to make sure we had enough food for the week. So that was really good. Um, yeah, honestly, it was beautiful in terms of like exercise, like there was a ton of hiking. I think the first week I got there, I hiked all of the trails that I possibly could. And <laughs> then in terms of running, you know, hill training is, is definitely something that proved to be very beneficial. Yeah. We think that's going to help you in terms of your marathon, a half marathon in Vegas. It's going to be pretty simple. And um, so that's great. Um, were you pre well prepared for the USMLE um, step one? And um, how did you do? hundred percent. Yeah, by the time you leave SABA, you have probably written more than 50 standardized exams and the environment in which you write the exams is computerized and mocks that exact environment in which you write all of your step exams. So I felt more than prepared, you know, and in addition to that, also too, SABA taught you how to study. So when you were no longer on the island, you still had those tools that you needed in order to study successfully. Um, and do successful on the exams. Step one, I did well on. I got um, a 238, which was above average at the time. And then step two, same thing. Um, I got a even higher score than that, which was also above average. Uh, so those obviously play a huge role in getting your residency spot. Like that's the number one thing that they look at. That's great. Um, research is, it can be important too. And especially, um, you know, doctors are going to be lifelong learners if you're trying to give Mm -hmm. the best to your, your patients, you really want to be able to kind of know what's out there. Um, tell us a bit about your um, your research paper, your RLRA paper that you wrote at the end of the basic sciences at SABA, and how did that help you with your residency? Uh, my RLR paper that I wrote was looking at exercise as a treatment uh, for patients with Parkinson's disease, uh, which really proved more to be as like an adjunctive treatment in that you would still need the medications, but you know, exercise definitely l appeared to be very helpful for these patients. Um, in terms of how it helped me for residency, you know, it, the the paper in and of itself didn't actually help me, but the tools that I gained through, you know, looking through PubMed and knowing how to search through the literature, and knowing what is a legitimate piece of research and what is not, was and has been helpful in terms of you know research going forward. That's great. Um, clinicals. Uh, this obviously students want to know about what clinicals are like. How you know that whole process? Um, how do the clinical, uh, say, the clinical department prepare you for and support you during your clinical rotations? And if you could just give us a little bit about what, what that's like in terms of doing cl clinicals. Mm -hmm. The department and like my clinical advisor was really good. She was fast at getting back to me and I wanted to get everything done as quickly as possible. Um, so she was really good in facilitating that. I, you know, that meant that I had to travel a little bit, which was actually, you know, a good experience. I was in Baltimore for a good chunk of time, Miami, Louisiana, Ohio. And then I did that, that trip again, essentially, that cycle again. Um, I ended up making like making one of my electives in fourth year um, and the department helped to facilitate me in doing that. I really wanted to do a urology elective um, at Baltimore and there was no elective there, but we rotated there as general surgery students. So it was an easy add on and the physician that I worked with as well as the school, you know, were happy to accommodate that. That's and great. it was, a, it was a wonderful experience. I have learned so much in that four weeks. Um, you know, otherwise in terms of clinicals, it was nice to rotate with a lot of SABA students during your third year. And then, you know, nice to kind of branch off and do what you wanted to do in your fourth year. So that was, uh, also very good. Um, in terms of how we fared against other schools or other 
students who were rotating, I think by far we like stood ahead of the pack. Um, we stood out, you know, in terms of our work ethic, in terms of our knowledge base, which I think a lot of the program directors noticed. That's great. And obviously making connections is, is certainly important. So I mean, that's, that's, uh, that worked out well. Mm -hmm. um, you talked a little bit about some of the places that you went to. What was your favorite clinical site and where was it? Um, my favorite clinical site, you know, I don't really have like a top three. Um, I Baltimore was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it there. The city was beautiful, but the rotation, um, it was at Union that I decided that I wanted to do surgery. Um, oh, you know, they let you scrub in on a ton of cases. So that was obviously very beneficial. I had a lot of fun down in Louisiana. I did a urology elective down in Homa, which was very good. There was no residence, so it was the surgeon and I operating together, which was fabulous. Um, and then I did an ER rotation actually in Ohio, which was a lot of fun too. Again, there was no residence, so I got to do a lot. That's great. Um, how did your clinical rotations inform you, um, inform your resident, uh, residency application and overall residency process? How did that kind of set you up and, and prepare you? Uh, yeah, your I mean your clinicals are where you get your papers from or your like ref letters of reference from. So first, that plays a huge role in where you get a residency spot, uh, especially if you shine like a lot of the SABA students do. That definitely helps you. Um, and then obviously it was at Baltimore that I decided I wanted to do surgery, which is kind of where I obviously applied to when I applied to residency. I guess two years ago now. And it sounds, I mean, obviously surgery sounds great. And I know a lot of us have that kind of perception of, you know, what it's like in terms of Gray's anatomy, but can you talk to us a little bit about what's real in terms of, of the day-to-day -day for a surgeon? Yeah. Uh, so for me right now, um, at the two, I, well, I, I personally wake up at like 3.45 or so to work out in the morning before I go to work. I go to work at like five-ish. Um, you know, get all the numbers. We round as a team, which is really good to have a, you know, a PGY five, four, three, two, and a one rounding together because you learn so much from your superiors. And then usually have like at least a half hour of education in the morning, sometimes longer. And then you either go off to cases or as a two, uh, commonly you're carrying around like a consult pager, um, taking surgery consults all day long, which is a huge learning experience, you know, there's operating, which is clearly a skill that you need to have, but in terms of seeing surgery patients, you need to know how to work them up, you know, who is critically ill, what kind of tests do I need to order, what am I most concerned about, does this patient need to go to the operating room now, or is this something that we can treat non-operatively? Um, and then, you know, that usually spans the whole day. We see our patients again in the afternoon, and then try and go home sometime between six and seven, but that's a... Uh, you know, flexible time. Wow, that's great. And again, great insight. I really appreciate that. Um, what are you doing now? And do you feel you have been well prepared for your current work? Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, I'm a prelim, so I have to get a categorical spot next year, either as a PGY3 or as a PGY2. Um, so you know, I have to study and do well on our ab site. Of course, I pick surgery, which is the only specialty that you have an exam every year. So it's like writing a step exam over and over again every year. <laughs> but, you know, in terms of the studying, clearly, you know, I know how to write standardized exams. This is a standardized exam. I did well on the step exams. I know how to study for standardized exams. So that's uh, one thing. So, you know, studying is kind of first and foremost uh, for me right now, but also to, you know, learning the basic starting to learn the basics of surgery, you know, laparoscopic skills, knowing how to do a appy and a coli, um, knowing how to take care of sick patients, which is something that you can pick up on in your clinical rotations, just like in um, an ICU setting or in a surgery ICU setting or something like that. Great. Um, and I guess last question, is there anything in particular that you'd like to share with students currently looking at SEVA? The whole process of trying to pick a school is obviously very difficult. What did you, was instrumental for you and, and what can you kind of uh, give as words of advice for, for people looking now? Uh, let's see, SEVA definitely teaches you how to work hard. Um, 
it pushes you, but it pushes you to be a better doctor. The experience of going to SABA is something that you can only share with people who have also gone to SABA. Three of my best friends now are SABA grads. Like we went to school together. We've stayed in touch together. Um, it teaches you how to write exams too um, very well. I think, you know, in terms of it equipping you with the skills that you need to succeed, it definitely does that. Um, you need to want to work hard and you need to be motivated and, you know, obviously you're going to medical school because you want to be a doctor. So you should put in a hundred percent, 110% of the effort every single day. Um, you know, which I think Saba kind of instills in you a little bit as well. And especially being from a Caribbean medical school, you know, you need to put in that much work um, to stand out, but you should want to do that anyway. Um, so, I mean, I think it's, I think it's great. The experience, you know, you can't, you can't exchange that for anything. Agreed. That's great. Thank you so much. I mean, we really appreciate the time that you spent with us. Um, um, good luck on your uh, on your half marathon. I know you do all of that and uh, and continue to do some great things. We're, we're so very proud of, of what you're doing. And, and again, thanks for sharing with us and, and giving us your insight. I want to thank everybody for joining us um, tonight. Uh, this kind of gives you a little uh, insight into what it's like to be uh, at SABA and, um, and what you can do. Um, after leaving Saba and Dr. Falls is obviously a, a wonderful example of that. Um, just want to remind you, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to contact us at admissions at saba.edu. Uh, my name is Bill Purnell. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions. If you have any concerns or questions, please feel free to reach out and give us a call. And thanks so much uh, for, uh, for joining us tonight. Have a great one. Thanks, all. Thanks, Dr. Falls. Yeah, bye. Thank you.